Listening is probably one of the most important and most missed things that God gives to us. So today we have a world that is socially disconnected and is hungry for someone to listen to them. And we can provide that. And now God's character can be seen in a desert of listening. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and he prayed, Father, I'm grateful that you have listened to me. You always listen to me. Now here is the Father giving a characteristic of his to his son. So what does Jesus do in return? He listens to the disciples. He listens to the people he runs into. He listens to us. And what do we do in return? We reflect also. So we start listening. And each of those passing down this characteristic of God is reflection. It's reflected from God to Jesus, to Jesus to us, us to others. That is true reflecting. So as I sit and listen to someone and ask questions and, 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 and care about what they have to say, I am reflecting one of the most important characteristics of, of God that maybe people haven't seen for a long time. When I listen to someone, it really shows acceptance to them. I accept you. I want to know more about you. If I'm always talking, I really am not accepting you. I just, you just happen to be someone I can talk to instead of listen to. Or let's say I'm talking to someone across the table and I've got my cell phone out there and little messages keep coming up. Have you ever sat by someone where you're talking to them and they keep glancing over at their cell phone, especially when you hear it rattle and stuff and they're checking those out? Don't you feel distracted? Don't you feel like that person cares more about that? And the TV's on and my kids are making a bunch of noise and stuff. I'm going to be distracted from listening. Our natural tendency to problem solve. A person starts talking and we've got a solution for the problem. Oh, what about this? We're problem solving. And that sounds like a good thing to do, but it's important for us to stop and listen and say, wait. I don't know if I heard the whole story yet. Why am I solving a problem before I've heard the whole story? And so listening gets distracted by our problem solving. Also, we're afraid of silence. We might ask a question and then instead of listening, maybe it took them too long to answer. And so then we started talking. And, and there's an interesting principle here in coaching, and that is the longer it takes a person to answer your question, the more powerful and important the question was. If I ask a question that is so is personal, that may be very important to them, they've got to think about it. Give it time and don't be afraid of silence. Or otherwise, we will lose the most important opportunities that we have. Does that make sense? And I'm supposed to be thinking and listening to what they're saying, and my mental clutter is so much. And I believe that we need to pray for clarity of mind and, and say, God, you know there's lots of things on my mind right now. Can you take them away because this person's really important to me? Do you think you'll do it? I do. Let's look at the beauty of listening. True listeners no longer have an inner need to make their presence known. They are free to receive, to welcome, to accept. Listening is much more than allowing another to talk while waiting for a chance to respond. See, because we want to give our point. And so we listen. So we need to wait on our story. There may be a time when it's appropriate, but um, when we tell ours, it takes away from the need for theirs. <clears throat> Listening is paying full attention to others and welcoming them into our very being. Isn't it fun to go to new places and to go on new roads and to see things you've never seen before? 
Think about that with people. Isn't it fun to say, I get to meet some new people, to listen to their story. It's like a traveling through a new place in the world and to be able to see something I've never seen before. And so we're, we're gaining from people, learning from them, opening up our heart. Listening is a form of spiritual hospitality by which you invite strangers to become friends, to get to know their inner selves more fully. That spiritual hospitality, I like that, that phrase. Doesn't that resonate with you? That whole concept of, of uh, accepting people in. Tell me more about that. Instead of just listen until you no longer exist. You see, we, it's, it's always about us. But when we learn this li listening skill pretty soon, it's like, I'm just learning about them. Just listening. So here's a couple listening skills I want you to learn. Listen genuinely. Uh, for instance, tell me what you think, not just information. What ideas have you had? Tell me more about that. Why is that issue important to you? See, you're really digging in deeper. Listening attentively. Are you still there? Because I didn't get any cues. And even when we are talking in person, go on, tell me some more. Wow, that's interesting. Be aware that those things are good to start adding to your listening skill. We listen actively so that we get excited with them. Listening with curiosity, tell me more. And this is that part about what's over the next hill when I'm driving. I have that curiosity. And so as I'm listening to them, I, I'm learning a little bit. And I say, wow, I'd like to know more about that. You did what as you were growing up? Or, and uh, so we're listening with curiosity and we're, we're, we're kind of can't wait till we get over the next hill to see what else we can find out from them. Uh, reflectively, you might say, I'm hearing you say this. Uh, am I correct to believe such and such? And so we're asking to clarify what they are saying. And we might think, well, that was too bad that I misunderstood, but it was better for you to ask and be corrected than to not ask at all. And then later on, they say, when we're talking, they say, man, I don't think you heard anything that I said. The fact I ask and am corrected is, is, is a, uh, actually a valuable thing. This is an acronym WAIT, which means why am I talking? <laughs> so when you're in this conversation, ask yourself, why am I talking right now? Is there a reason? Here's some simple rules in coaching. That's a, this is probably a good time to bring those out. And one is to not give advice. If you tell them things, it will not be half as powerful as if they discover it. Don't tell people something that they can discover on their own. Uh, and then don't fix the problem for them. When you are always fixing the problem, they will become dependent on you. If you are share, uh, spending time with people and you know there's something that would really help them, and they're not coming up with it, you always ask their permission to share something with them. While we've been talking, I've been listening to what you're saying, something keeps coming to my mind that I think would really be helpful. Do you mind if I share that with you? You see what I've done? I haven't just dumped on them. And then after I share that, I might say, now, did that seem to fit your situation or does that seem like something that might be helpful? What I did is I didn't tell them this is absolute, you have to do this. I shared it with permission and then asked them, does that seem like it might work? It still is their choice. It still has the power of, of something they've discovered because I simply gave opportunities, they discovered it, it still was theirs. 